Good evening. Thank you all for joining me this evening. Tonight we have a collection of chilling dating app horror stories specifically related to Tinder, and I will be joined by a special guest, Celestial Noir. As you may have read in the title already, I will be doing a giveaway of an official Mr. Ramsey t-shirt. All you have to do to enter is like, comment and subscribe. I'll put forth the winner on the 1st of June. So anyway, without further ado, let's begin. I was 21, recently became a police officer, and was also recently dumped. So my friend suggested Tinder. As a 21 year old and new cop, I had the I'm invincible, I can take on anyone mentality. I matched with a very good looking out of my league female. We chatted and eventually set up a date to meet. She said she had a great open field to look at the stars and hang out, and we could meet up at her house. So night came. I was excited and she seemed to be excited when I picked her up. She guided me to the field and it looked nice. Open space, woods, deer, and other wildlife. In the field, I noticed really dim headlights in the distance. Then the van started driving towards us and pulled over in front of us, almost close enough to block me from going forward. I told her to stay in the car and I'll go say hi. I grabbed my flashlight I had in the car and walked up. In the front driver's side of the van, there was a decently sized man. I asked him what was going on and if he could back his car up a little bit. He was very polite, said he was the owner of the property and said he didn't mean to scare us. He told me that he's been having trouble with poachers on his property and just wanted to make sure we weren't going to be shooting at anything. I ensured him that we only came out here to look at some stars and wildlife. He was perfectly okay with that, told me to have a nice date and drove away. After that, the girl was texting non-stop. Around an hour later, I saw headlights coming towards us again, this time at a really fast pace. We hopped in the car and I moved into a more defensive position. The same man came close enough to almost hit my car. She hopped out of the car at that point and ran towards the guy. I immediately knew I was screwed. I got out and gave them commands to back up and get on the ground. Neither of them complied, obviously. He then proceeded to charge me and knock me to the ground. Luckily, I was able to get him on his back and get up. I saw my date grab a metal pipe from the van. She told me they had a gun and to give them my money and truck and I won't get hurt. Of course though, with my I'm invincible mentality, I said no. She started to cry saying that they didn't want to hurt me. He then started to go back towards the car. At that point, I told them I was a cop, drew my concealed firearm and to lay on the ground. After a moment of shock from all of us, they complied. I was able to call 911 and tell them my name and badge number. I had two at gunpoint and I needed backup immediately. I gave our dispatcher the best directions I could to this field while on the phone, then they both fled. Again. Stupid new cop, young guy mentality, I chased them. I took off after the man who ran into the woods around the field. I chased him for maybe about 30 seconds, and I heard three loud pops. I saw a muzzle flash. My I'm invincible mentality went right out the window. I ran like hell back towards my car and peeled the hell out of there. I went back to the area I had picked her up in, called dispatch again, and had officers come out to the location. Of course, the first officers to pull up was my sergeant and my field training officer. Of course, they were both completely understanding and didn't give me any shit about it at all. The most used words were dumbass and stupid fucking rookie. I hopped in their car and went towards the field. Luckily, the van was still there. I was told to shut my mouth and only come out if they were getting shot at. 
They cleared the area and started looking in the van. They found meth right under the center console and searched the car. What scared me the most was when the field training officer and sergeant came back to the patrol car, let me out, and told me to come look in the back of the van. Both of them were pale, looked horrified. I went to the back of the van, where there were several knives, duct tape, lighter fluid, a decent amount of rifle ammunition, handcuffs, and what looked to be dried blood. In the front seat passenger side, we found an AR-15 style rifle and two more handguns. We called for immediate backup and detectives. When they investigated the blood, it turned out that it wasn't blood. The plates had been stolen and the van was reported stolen. I still get shit about the whole encounter, but luckily no one got hurt. I will never use online dating services again, ever. So I downloaded Tinder when I was 18 and being single in a big city, I ended up going on a lot of fun dates. One guy really caught my attention, because well, he was really, really attractive. We chatted a bit and I felt pretty into him so I decided we could meet for coffee. He was sweet, charming, and had a great conversation about school, art and music. We found out we were both musicians, and the date was going so well that I agreed to walk the few blocks back to his house so he could play some music for me. I was new to online dating and was still fairly naive, so I followed him into his weird converted garage bedroom and sat down on the couch while he pulled out his keyboard. He played for a while and I started getting a little antsy. He was super into music and kind of getting aggressive with the keyboard. He was slamming keys down and making these weird noises. So I shot up out of my seat and told him that I should get going soon. He totally went back to normal, his tone changed and his posture became less hunchbacked. So when he apologised for getting carried away, I agreed to sit back down on the couch so we could talk more. He came and sat down next to me and we went back to our earlier conversation. He seemed back to normal and nice, so when he asked if he could kiss me, I agreed. He leaned in towards me and I closed my eyes waiting, and I waited but didn't feel his lips. So I opened my eyes, a peek, and saw him staring at me. I threw my head back surprised, but he had snaked his hand back towards my hair and interwoven his fingers so I couldn't move. He then inhaled deeply and told me, You smell like you're Jewish. I can tell because you smell like my aunt's house. I was totally freaked out at this point, partly because yes, I am, and tried to wiggle away from him frantically stating that I had to go. He then jumped on top of me, but started sobbing, yelling that he's so sorry he made me uncomfortable. His body weight was completely preventing me from moving, so I forced myself to rub his back. I told him that I wasn't uncomfortable at all, that he was really sweet. He made me promise over and over again that I'd see him again before finally getting up off of me. I moved to the door and tried calmly to tell him that I really needed to go. He was blocking my way and all I could think of was that I needed him to let me leave. I couldn't fight him off, he told me I needed to kiss him before I could leave, and I quickly pecked him on the lips. He smiled at me and I was glad he didn't expect more. Call me please. I think that went well, he said as he opened up the garage door and I scurried out. I called my mum and started crying as soon as I was far enough away. She called me a cab home and I blocked him. I saw him once after that on campus, and that was enough for me. So I hope we never meet again. Just a slight edit. Okay, so I'll add some extra information that had been asked of me. We very loosely had mutual friends, friends with my old roommate, who I no longer was in contact with for very different reasons. I found out after that he knew her because he sold her drugs. I did in fact contact the police. This happened when I was 18, I am 22 now. Nothing more came out of it. He did share that he had really bad anxiety, however, I was not aware that he was self-medicating with drugs. 
which were probably the cause of the incident. Last I heard, he was in another state growing weeds, and hasn't tried to contact me in almost two years. I use Tinder pretty frequently, and it's usually cool, just meeting people, chilling, smoking with most of them. So I match with this dude named Charlie, and he seems cool. He's really cute and he plays music, which is really appealing to me as I also sing and play piano. We talk for a little while, and I agree to meet him at his house. Mistake number one. Why did I think it was a good idea to meet a stranger in their home? I don't drive, so I take an Uber over, and it's a decent way away, so it's kinda pricey. When he buzzes me into his apartment complex, I got this really creepy vibe, but I shook it off his nerves. I go up to the third floor and he's standing at the door. Things are cool, we are just chilling. We smoked a couple of bowls and we are watching a movie. So he makes a move on me, and I go with it. We end up on the bed and we are obviously engaging in adult activities when out of nowhere he wraps his hand around my neck, hard. Now that's all fine and good with me. I mean I can dig that it's in the right setting, but alone in a stranger's house when he didn't even check to see if I was cool is not one of those settings. So I literally can't breathe and I'm fairly certain I'm turning blue at this point, and he is just relentless. Not only is he choking me, he's now yelling in my face, are you scared? With this wild look in his eyes and I'm like, fuck yes I am scared, you're trying to kill me right now. I started to struggle and he was gripping even harder. I'm not even kidding you guys, I seriously thought I was going to die. By some miracle, I wriggle out of his grasp and start screaming. He's yelling at me to calm down and I'm frantically trying to put on my clothes. He grabs my wrist and I'm trying to leave and I use all my strength to pull away and slam the door. As it was closing, the charming fella bid me adieu with the words, fucking cunt. I get home and I look in the mirror and I have hella bruises on my neck. I tried to cover up with makeup to no avail. I straight up looked like I was almost strangled to death. Then he texts me saying, I think you need more than one dick. And I'm like, oh really? You want to bring a friend and kill me together? How lovely. Anyways, I blocked him and reported him on Tinder. I wish I could have done more because I seriously think he would have killed me. I've been debating going to the police, but the bruises are gone and it's a he said she said thing. But I'm really starting to wonder if I should. Because the next girl might not be so lucky. 0 out of 10. Would not attempt you to be murdered again. Crazy, strangler, tender dude. Let's not meet. I want to thank you all for joining me. If you did enjoy, please remember to subscribe, like and comment, um, especially if you want to enter the giveaway. Um, we're almost at two and a half thousand subscribers, which again is crazy. Um, I do have a couple of videos that are ready to upload, but I'm just waiting on um, third party people to get back in touch with me about a few things. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed, like I said, leave a like and a comment. Tell me what story was your favourite. Um, however, I hope you all have a pleasant evening. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.